also for certificate students. Uh, question from last week, found out that Dr. Sadula is the advisor for all cybersecurity certificate students. You can access her at this email address, uh, contact her to figure out what you should do for taking future classes. Uh, we are here doing electronic voting. There we are. And uh, we actually can't see your slides online. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, thank you, John. Uh, yes. Well, that's, that's press the proper, I can see my slides. What's the matter with you? Uh, let's do some screen sharing here and there. Okay. Yes. And again, I, I mentioned that uh, Dr. Sadula for the separate certificate students, she's the one you want to contact uh, for uh, advising. Doing that. Otherwise, graduate students and undergraduates see your normally assigned advisors. There's a schedule. Electronic voting is today along with Wednesday. No class. Relax. Take it off. Nobody has any class or anything. We're going to come back from malware on Monday. Uh, Talk about privacy issues because we mostly been talking about information security and we haven't talked too much about privacy. We'll talk about privacy next week. And then in two weeks, we will review for the exam on Wednesday, November 3rd. And reminder that that lecture on review on November 14th is online only. If you want to come here and sit in McNair Hall, bring your laptop, see me, because I'm not going to be here, but I will be online. And more to do. Another assignment here, read this. Oh, I better put that up assignment. Well, uh, it's not a graded thing, but we'll talk about it. Reflections on trusting trust. A uh, ACM Turing Award paper by Tom, or by Ken Thompson. Is that you? Uh, I'm Ken Williams. No, that's Ken oh. Thompson. I wish it was good. Uh, yes, anybody know who Ken Thompson is? Anybody? Uh, Thompson and Ritchie. Uh, created Unix, which was the inspiration for Linux. Uh, Ritchie developed the C language. These guys have done a lot of stuff. Thompson and Ritchie together did law, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and he has an interesting paper, by the way, it's only three pages long, so it's not that much to read, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it is a classic paper. And so, you know, if you're going to spend your time reading something, you might as well read those classics. Uh, okay. So, all right. Voting. Voting. All right. What are the requirements to vote here in the United States? Uh, you got to be a citizen. You got to meet your state's residency requirement that you've lived here for so long. You got to, by the way, if you're a homeless person, you can still vote. That's a separate issue. And you have to be 18 years or older. Yes. Not if you are not a U.S. citizen, you have to be a U.S. citizen. That's a requirement. Why? Why am I not? Why am I not? Because the reason. Oh, the question comes up. Why do you have to be a U.S. citizen? Uh, because well, you are. I pay tax. Well, yeah, you have to pay taxes if you're working here, and I that would ought to give you some. I might point out that uh, sometimes people in other states. Uh, the territories, if you're Washington, D.C., you still get to vote. You pay taxes. You don't get a representative in Congress, though. Uh, I'm going to take a cheap way out and remind you that I didn't make the rules. I just tell you what they are. But yes, uh, you got to be used. One of the big reasons is they don't want lots of people who are not part of this country setting the rules and government of this country. And that sort of makes sense. Okay. Now, these requirements are typically taken care of during registration. You have to register prior to voting. You have to be on the list of valid voters. And to get on the list, you have to, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but you have to convince the uh, Board of Elections or the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, who also handles this, that you are 18 years old resident. Now, one of the rules in the United States is voting is secret. Nobody, including the poll workers, are allowed to see how you voted. We don't know if you voted for this guy or for that person or whether you voted yes or no for anything. We don't get to know. So any system that works with the elections 
has to be able to keep your vote secret so that people don't know how you voted. On the other hand, it's important that we know that you did vote because people are not allowed to vote twice. Everybody gets the vote and the vote counts equally. So you get the vote, we get to know that you voted, so you don't vote twice, but you don't, but we don't get to know how you voted. That, you know, if we used encryption, we know how, how we could fix that. I'll bet everybody here could figure out a clever way to do that with encryption. But that unfortunately is not the way it works. Well, and basically, a, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I was gonna ask a quick question about that. So I guess from the understanding, uh, since you you can't normally see who someone voted for but things like party affiliation are not something that's i guess private or hidden for people to see that's, i'm assuming that's correct uh if you there's a certain amount of registration information of, that's public information that's available on the board of elections website and one of the things is party affiliation in the united states you can be registered for one of the parties there's uh republicans democrats the uh Green Party, the Libertarians, I think, have candidates this year. There have been other parties. Through the couple of hundred years of a United States government, we've come up with parties to come have gone. Uh, some parties are much different than they used to be. There used to be the Democrat-Republican Party, Democrat-Republican. Thomas Jefferson, I think, ran under the Democrat-Republican Party. Now they've split. Anyway, yeah, so, well, and remember, of course, you don't have to vote the way your party says you have to vote, wants you to vote. You can vote any way you want to. Uh, that is called splitting your ticket. I have done that myself many times. I'm registered for one party, but if I think the candidate in my party is just not cutting it, I've been known to vote for the other guy. Uh, so in security is, it's basic. We have to make this work. We have to allow everybody to vote who's supposed to vote without uh, prohibiting people who are allowed to vote from voting and changing vote. That's the goal. A uh, couple quick facts about security, which I took from the board, the state's Board of Elections website. Uh, so far, nobody has successfully attacked the North Carolina voting system. We use paper ballots in this state. We'll talk about that shortly, but paper ballots are a significant security improvement because it's really hard to hack a paper ballot. Uh, you have certified the systems working have all been certified. Uh, there are no network connections. Obviously, that piece of paper has no network connections to it. The machine that you run it through has no network connections. The machines that program them have no network connections, which really slows down attacks by anybody else. Uh, they've been tested. We have trained officials. You're talking to a trained official here. Yes, I am a chief judge for a precinct. Uh, I have uh, I think half a dozen people working with me and we run the elections and we do all the things I'll explain in just a few minutes. Uh, they do post-election audits. After the election, they go out and check. Does this make sense? Do people vote? And they have an investigations division. Some, most states don't, but we have a group of people dedicated to investigating potential problems. Now, throughout the United States, there's lots of voting. There's over 100,000 voting places in the United States and about 8,000 precincts. There are 134 precincts in, in North Carolina. They got them all over the place. Precincts are just some geographical area that all goes to the same polling place to vote. Uh, and there's all sorts of people involved in pulling it off, about a million people. Uh, they mentioned, by the way, if you read the news, people are threatening poll workers. Not a small group, there's a million of us, be careful. Uh, okay, one of the things about the fact that we got all these, and machines are isolated. Everybody's using different machines, different types of equipment in different states. A coordinated attack against all the equipment would be difficult. Because, I mean, if everybody used the same voting system, you know, you know, some sort of electronic voting system. You can see it might be possible for somebody to hit them all. But with uh, all these different polling places, 8,000 precincts, 50 states, all sorts of local jurisdictions, uh, a coordinated attack is difficult. So, of course, that certainly doesn't help efficiency, uh, but it does make us less vulnerable. Uh, here in Guilford County, I have talked with, I, 
went and had an interview with Charlie Cullicutt, who is the director of the Guilford County Board of Elections, and Craig Fox, who I happen to know is on the Board of Elections. Okay, as I mentioned. Okay, registration. Uh, register, you have to register at the, you can do it by mail, at the Board of Elections, well, not you can cancel by mail, but you can register at the Board of Elections downtown, or when you get a driver's license or do anything at the DMV. Uh, they need to know, again, your name, address, and date of birth. The address is to show residency. The date of birth, of course, to show that you're over 18. Uh, and the name to make sure that you are who you say you are. In North Carolina, you can register the same day you vote during early voting only. Early voting is underway now. If you want to vote early, now a lot of people do, you can go out and Register if you're not registered and it's going to say, I'm not registered, you have to fill out the forms and make you registered and then away you go. But come November 8th, second Tuesday of the month, uh, you cannot register and vote on that day. If you're not registered, you cannot vote. You have to register ahead of time. So uh, quick question here, I didn't mention, but what do you think about this? Uh, I have a series of questions that I got from the uh, cyber infrastructure, the uh, CISA agency, US agency. So, oh. Okay, let's do it. Get your cards up or online. Click. Okay, click, click, click. Uh, got yours. Okay. Don't have yours because you're not picking up. Okay. All right. Uh, there's always a wise guy. All the, We have at least one, all the above. And uh, most people are saying false. That is correct. It is false uh, in poll show results. Uh, Yes, the CISA, uh, Computer Infrastructure Security Agency, uh, tells us the voterless maintenance and other electronic integrity measures protect against uh, voting for people who are deceased. The county keeps track of who's born, who's died, and they pass this information on to the Bureau of Board of Elections, which is right next door, and tells them when people die, they pull them off the rolls. Also. If you go to vote, there's a form that says, if a family member has died, you can report their death to the, what they should already know. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay, here's how voting works in North Carolina. You walk into the polling place and you come up to a desk where you first uh, tell them your name and your address. Don't show them your ID. They do not want to show your ID. It's been a showing ID was a, law that came and went and came and went and right now no id we don't want to we put your id we will stop you if you show us your id we don't want to see it uh even though you don't have to show an id and of course people always ask well what if i say i'm somebody else you have to sign a form saying you're this person and it is a felony to misrepresent yourself uh, okay so you tell us your uh Joe Smith, and you live at 123 Main Street. We look in our book and we see if we find Joe Smith at 123 Main Street. Uh, if we do, great. We take, well, there's a sticker with your name. We put it on a paper form that is the authorization to vote form, known to work there as the ATV. If you're not in the book, well, that means usually one of two things. One, you're not registered, or you are registered and you're at the wrong place to vote. Now, every person is assigned a precinct where you're supposed to vote. If you're someplace else, now for early voting, you could early vote any voting place in Guilford County. But on election day, you have to go to your polling place. You go someplace else, we'll kindly tell you where you're supposed to go and send you on your way. You got to vote in your, yes, sir. Oh, well, we'll get the mail-in ballots shortly. Yes, mail-in ballots. Uh, yes, it goes to me. Okay. Uh, by the way, on a primary, we are 
this is, we had a primary last May, but this is not a primary now. If you're a primary, if you're registered as Republican, you get the Republican ballot. Registered as a Democrat, you get the Democrat ballot. Registered as a Green, it's too bad they didn't have a primary. But if you're registered as independent, then you get to choose. You have to tell us, do you want to vote in this primary or that primary? Tell us what the, but if you're registered for a party, you vote for that party only. Okay, so now you've got this piece of paper. You take that, you sign it, saying that this is your name and everything's correct. You walk it over to another table where another person will give you the ballot. In the primary, it gets more confusing because they have to give you the Democratic ballot or the Republican ballot or the Green ballot or the Libertarian ballot. Yeah, uh, but now it's simple. Everybody gets the same ballot. They give you the ballot, one with a pen, because our paper ballots are fill in the little circle, just like those exams you always take. Yes, just like that. Students have an advantage over the regular people because we know how to fill in circles. Uh, and then you go to a small table and you mark your preferences as you wish to vote, putting the little circle by the, by the name you're choosing. Uh, and after you select them all, and you think you got it right, you voted for every person and don't vote twice for the same race. In other words, we have, you know, for senator, you only vote for one person. If you vote for two people, it's not going to work because then you put your uh, paper ballot into a machine that reads the marks. Uh, your, if everything is okay, the paper dumps down into the machine, into the locked portion of the machine and displays a happy message, thank you for voting. If on the other hand, you've made a mistake, such as you voted for two candidates when you can only vote for one, or you've got marks elsewhere on the paper, uh, it will spit the paper back out, tell you what mistakes you've made, and then you can get another paper ballot from the election workers, and they'll give you a second paper ballot. By the way, three strikes and you're out. You can make two mistakes, but you better get that third one correct. Oh, and for people who, some people getting old, it could happen and their hands shake, uh, it's hard for them to do the little circles. We have a machine at the polling place that will do the circles for you. You put the paper ballot in, it displays an electronic screen, you press the button and it draws the little circles for you so you don't have to worry if, if that's physically difficult for you. It's supposed to work if you're blind, but I'm not sure how that goes. Uh, okay, then you read in the machine and it records it. Okay, we do this until from like 6.30 in the morning till 7.30 at night. 13 hours. In the United States, we only vote on one day. Well, of course, we have big early voting. Uh, after the polls close and the chief judge announces that the polls are closed, uh, we then start cleaning it up and we press some buttons on the vote counting machine to say the polls are done. You then put a USB flash memory card in the uh, machine, tell it you're done, and it will copy the results onto the flash memory card. It also prints out pieces of paper. There are long strips of paper, like a receipt paper, printing a paper copy of all the results. Two copies of it, two copies of the results. The two election judges, myself and another one of the judges, signs each form saying, yes, this is the real form. This is what we got on the machine and we sign it. Uh, as chief judge, I take the USB drive, the box of ballots, and the uh, signed paper down to the Board of Elections. The other copy of the signed paper is going to another judge who takes it and drops it and puts it in an envelope and mails it through US mail to the Board of Elections. So the results are getting there by two different routes. One, by the chief judge taking it downtown, handing him the USB and the paper copy. The other paper copy is being mailed through the US mail to the uh, people. Uh, paper ballots, by the way, which again, fall to the bottom of the machine. We then pull them out of the machine, put them into boxes, seal the boxes, sign those two. Every place, there's seals all over the same. When you get the, when you set up in the debut, you know, where you have to, break the seals of these boxes, recording that you, yes, got the proper seal number and you then put more seals on it, record the seal number. So if anybody comes in, tries to open it, they have to break the seal and we'll know that it's been broken. Okay. 
Uh, now, uh, there are different precincts. People in different areas of the county vote for different things. Not all the ballots are the same throughout the county because people are different congressional districts, different uh, school board districts, all sorts of districts. It even gets harder. And sometimes these districts, you have multiple districts in one precinct. Terrible mistake in my point of view. And so when you go to a to vote, the voting people have to get you the right ballot because not everybody's getting the same ballot. But anyway, uh, they have to, so they have to program, they have to create the ballots for all the different precincts. They have to uh, then program that vote counting machine. This is, programming is done on laptops that are kept in a safe. They keep these laptops in a vault. The laptops do not have any network connections. So they program them. Uh, they, want, they take them out to program them. They do the, uh, what they have to do, they take that information out on a thumb drive and they plug that thumb drive into the voting machines to program it and away it goes. By the way, you need a password when we start in the morning to vote and to turn on the machine, you need a password to make it work. Okay. Now, after the, all the voting is done, the day after, actually over the next couple of weeks, uh, at least within the next 10 days, they will take the box of ballots that we carry downtown and they'll run them through a vote counting machine. And then they'll compare the count they got through that rerun against the count reported and see if they match because they ought to match. We got the ballots and see if, machine. if they don't match, of course, we have a horrible problem, but if they do match, everybody's happy. So far, they've always matched. Uh, the Board of Elections gives the press, the public, the uh, results as soon as they get them. They, election night, you know, you can watch television and see how the election is going. They get that information from the Board of Elections, which is releasing this information all the time. Uh, they do not actually make the official statement until 10 days after the election. So that would be the eight, 18th of this month when the uh, head of the Board of Elections tells the state what the results were. Uh, you may have heard of poll observers. There are, uh, there are people may, certain people may observe the election process. General members of the public are not allowed to do this. Uh, you can go into the polls if you are an election worker or if you are voting. If you're done voting, you have to leave. Now, you can't have observers because you wanna make sure everything's going in the up and up. And so you can have observers watching the polling. These have to be appointed by the political party. So you've got the Republicans and the Democrats can appoint people to watch. As far as I know, the Libertarians or the Greens don't have any observers, but who knows? They could. Uh, so you have to be appointed by your party in advance. Uh, when I go and get the equipment, run the election, they give me a list of who's gonna be there in my uh, precinct to observe from each party. There's also a roving uh, at-large person who checks. Uh, they can also be there. You can have up to two people from each party plus an award. Okay. So anyway, they all have to be there. What do they get to do? Uh, they watch. If they have a concern, they tell the chief judge, that's me. Uh, and they also may get a list of those There's authorization, authorization to vote forms. They may look at the authorization to vote forms on periodic times, usually like 10, two and four or something. Uh, at certain times during the day, they may look, uh, basically they just wanna see who's voted. Typical thing for the parties, they wanna look through the who's voted, see, and they have a big list of who is in their precinct for that party, they then check off if you voted. They see the people who have voted in theory, they will row, uh, get the others who haven't voted out to vote. That's the purpose. Okay. Uh, things the poll observers cannot do. They can't speak to voters. They cannot campaign. They cannot get in the way. They cannot, uh, they, most importantly, they can't watch you vote. Uh, now, for those of us with long gray beards, I remember, Years ago, 
voting equipment was not electronic, no batteries included. Uh, it looked like this. Uh, you pressed a physical lever to vote. Uh, it was a voting. There's this big lever. You got on the machine. You pull the big lever to the side that closed the curtain and enabled the voting. You then click down the switches, the levers for each candidate you wanted. And when you were done, you then pull the big lever back to open the curtains and all your votes were counted in counters in the back of the machine, all mechanical. Kind of hard to, to attack, although it isn't immediately obvious when you look at the machine, whether it's doing what it's supposed to. People vote by mail. I guess they were asked about voting by mail. Uh, every place you can vote allows you to have an absentee ballot. Absentee ballots work in different ways. Absentee is given, assuming that you have some sort of cause for not being able to vote. Say you're scheduled for surgery on the day of election, you will not be able to vote. That's a good reason to not vote. But a lot of people now can vote by mail. Uh, you typically request a ballot, they send you one out, you uh, mark your preference, you put it in an envelope, you put that envelope in a mailing envelope, and send it to the polls or, or possibly drop it off at a drop box in certain locations. It varies across the country. Uh, many states, I can't remember the number here, I think like 34, allow you to vote, vote early in person, like North Carolina, or vote by mail. Some states do completely vote by mail. The whole thing is vote by mail. You, every registered uh, electorate, uh, is allowed, to, or excuse me, every registered voter is sent a ballot, they fill it out, and mail it back, all done by mail. Other place like North Carolina allows you to do it in person or vote by mail if you want to. Uh, certain states allow you to vote by person, but they don't do early voting by mail. Like, four states here don't allow you to do any early voting. You gotta vote on election day or you don't vote, assuming you get drop an absentee ballot. Uh, I think I mentioned absentee belt. Uh, this is a very interesting chart. At least it is to me. You'll notice 1980, you know, not too long ago, say 2000, 20 years ago, almost everybody, 90% of the people voted on election day. Very few people voted early because they didn't usually have early voting. And then they started allowing that and you could vote by mail. Well, you can see that's good. And during the pandemic, that just shot up. And last uh, election, uh, two years ago, 43% of the people voted by mail. That was more than the number of people who voted on election day. And now down to only 30% of the people actually vote on election day because early voting's picked up. If you count the early voting uh, in person and the early voting by mail, add them together, you get what is that? About 70% of the people vote before election day. Uh, this, of course, concerns some people who are looking at the election day stuff. In some places, not North Carolina, some places that the voting people are not allowed to look at any of the mail-in stuff or the results of early voting until election day. So suddenly they have to look at all this stuff. So we got the in-person voting comes and then they're processing the mail stuff over the next couple of days. And that can change it because yes, if the by mail stuff is 43%, you can imagine that can change the election. And I know some people were ranting and raving last presidential election that uh, things changed and how could that happen and what must be false. No, you have to remember that. Now here in North Carolina, the election boards can move ahead. As soon as they get the stuff by mail, they start processing it. So although they don't tell anybody, they have started to accumulate all the votes. So they can announce. Oh, okay. We're not going to do that. Uh, uh, okay, paper ballots. That's always, you know, some people say we should just hand count these things with all the people watching. Uh, I might point out just here in Guilford County, you know, 285 and a half, 285,595 ballots were cast. Uh, and each ballot has 19 races, at least the one for this. I just counted my ballot, went down and counted the number of different uh, races there. There were 19 of them. So since we only have two minutes left, we're not going to do this. We're going to split into groups and say, well, 
Is that going to work? If you hand count the ballots, is that going to is that going to be secure? Since we're talking about secure, well, you know, if you do it in public, it's going to be accurate. Humans are not very accurate counting things. Certainly aren't efficient. I can tell you that. Uh, would it be better than the current voting process? That's you know a debatable question. I can tell you obviously my personal opinion is that's a terrible idea. It would take forever today. You've got 285,600 ballots, 19, you know, when you pick somebody up, someone's gonna read off, you know, somebody gonna write on a blackboard. Is that what you expect? I don't know how that's supposed to work. Uh, foreign election interference, there's been a lot of report about that. Uh, yes, uh, some people claim it didn't happen. Uh, although uh, this fella, Trump's campaign manager, did confess to receiving $60 million from pro-Russian political groups. He was sentenced to seven and a half years in jail, uh, but the former president gave a presidential part to him. All right. Uh, okay, we're out, of, well, we're out of time, but uh, here in the United States, typically there's only two people running for an office. Some people are imposed. Rarely do we have more than that. Uh, and so we don't have to worry about there are all sorts of interesting methods, ranked voting, if you have plenty of people. A lot of countries have more than two parties. And so you've got multiple, three or four or five or six parties running. And so lots of people are on the ballot. And there are many ways to run that ballot. We're not gonna discuss those today. Uh, here's the schedule again, no class Wednesday. Do not come here, I'm not coming here. Uh, please read this paper, I'll put it under assignments. Uh, it's, it's easy. Easy reading, guy. It's not very technical. It's well, sort of technical. We'll get into it. Uh, registrations today, uh, and if you're a certificate student, talk to Dr. Sadula. Uh, her emails m sadula at edu for advice. Otherwise, if you're a grad student or undergrad, talk to your assigned advisors. If you don't know who they are, ask me. I'll tell you who they are. That's it. Uh,